Good morning, my friends. It's BBK Dragoon here, and I've got my morning voice on as I steal this quad pod from Diddy. Sorry, bro. <laughs> uh, the topic of improving aim or accuracy is highly requested. It's a topic I've discussed a lot through the years, but just know there are a lot of opinions about aim and accuracy. My opinions come from a mixture of experience and from a Halo Reach Pro back when it was on the MLG circuit who I got some coaching from. So first, I want to talk about your actual setup. This is sensitivity, your controller, your screen setup, etc. And then we're going to talk about the actual mechanics of aiming and what you can do in-game to improve. So starting with your sensitivity, there is no perfect sensitivity. That's the first thing you need to get out of your head. Everybody's play style is different. Everybody's way they use the controller and what they're comfortable with is different. This is no one shoe fits all type of thing. The benefits of a slow sensitivity are accuracy. It can be much easier to keep your crosshairs on the opponent during a shot string with a slower sensitivity, and it, they're just a lot easier in terms of you don't have to finesse it. On a higher sensitivity, when you're trying to hold that accuracy, it can be really easy to go too far or not enough at all. So slow sensitivity will give you that benefit of accuracy, with the downside of it's much harder when you're getting flanked. And if somebody's like a blink shotgunner in this game, a slow sensitivity is going to be very hard. This game has a very tight FOV field of view so slower sensitivities have a trade-off big time well you might have that really improved accuracy being mobile and being like fully able to snap and turn around if you're getting flanked is gonna be slow so the trade-off is with a fast sensitivity you can be ridiculously mobile and aggressive and be that shotgun blink guy who's up in the face of your opponents and not have to worry but keeping Accurate shots on somebody at longer distances, like one of these shots, is going to be much harder with a fast sensitivity. I play on sensitivity 4. I don't think it's perfect, and I don't think it fits everybody, but it fits my style because I come from Halo, and generally in Halo I played 4. I like a slower sensitivity for accuracy, as I feel like I can predict flanks pretty often, and I don't really have to worry that much about it. But I, do, I can tell you up front, there's a lot of situations where I know... I would do better on a higher sensitivity when I'm playing aggressively like with the shotgun or not. So how long do you practice with a new sensitivity? The Halo Reach Pro told me two weeks. Every time you switch your sensitivity, you need to put two weeks in on it before you change. And that seems a little bit long. So I'll just say probably a week. It would be my preference. If you guys are taking this seriously, play on a sensitivity for a week. What a lot of times you'll see people do is they try a new sensitivity out for a few games, they don't like it, and they just switch back to something else. That's not how it works. This is muscle memory, it's instinctive. Sensitivity is something that takes a long time for your brain to learn. It's not something that you actively, when you play the game, are going, okay, I need to move it a little bit left. It's all subconscious, and the only way you can get that info drilled into your head is experience. So don't make the mistake of just trying something out for not long enough, okay? So, controller. I'm going to talk about vibration. I turn vibration off. I've done it for years, and I think it's a very compelling argument when somebody says, why would a vibrating controller in your hand improve your accuracy? To me, it's a stress mechanic. It makes it harder to aim, and I don't like it. It's jarring to me. Now, many folks go, how will I know if I'm being shot without vibration? Well, it's just like Counter-Strike or any other PC shooter. All the information you need to know is on screen when you're getting shot. It always con conveys to you when you are getting a shot. This is a mixed bag though. Some Halo pros don't use vibration, some do. So I'll never win this argument. Some of you will be vibration players for life. All I can tell you is when I turned vibration off like five years ago, back when I was playing Reach, changed everything, absolutely everything. I love playing with no vibration. I cannot stand having that stress mechanic and having something shaking in my hand when I'm trying to make real finesse bits of movement, okay? So your monitor versus a TV versus viewing distance and viewing height, basically. What setup are you on? This plays into how you will perform. If you're sitting on a couch really far away, it can be pretty hard to aim and get the shots down that you need. I'm also not encouraging you to glue your eyes to the screen and sit super duper close because that's bad for your eyesight. I recommend a distance of like three to four feet if you're with like a computer monitor and you want it at eye level. You want the screen not to be above or below you, but at eye level if possible. 
That's a small thing, but you may notice a difference. There's a trade-off between monitors and TV. TVs have slower response times in general, whereas monitors have usually faster response times. And some players will even look at response time um, low latency monitors just to improve their gameplay. A lot of the streamers, if you look, are probably using monitors that have like less than 5 ms of basically latency. And that just means how long it takes for the action you input on your controller to appear on the screen. For my controller, I use a Control Freak FPS on the right stick. I've done this for about five years. I really like the product. I'm not endorsed by them. It gives you a bit extra leverage and more height out of the controller, and I just like the way it feels. I don't need it on the left stick because your strafe does not need that kind of finesse, or it just feels a little bit bulky in my hand. So if there's only one thing you take away from the first half, it's how to find your best sensitivity, the pros and cons of fast and slow. You don't need to buy anything to improve your accuracy, but I wanted to tell you guys the different aspects and what people look for. In terms of in-game accuracy, it's a combination of both your left and your right stick. While that might sound super obvious, think about it this way. If you were a static turret, you couldn't move and you're playing Destiny PvP, the only way you could kill people is if you use your right stick. That's the only way you can aim at people. That's pretty hard, especially on console. Versus if you were a tank. Think about a tank, how it moves around and the turret can swivel. It's both the movement of the tank and the swiveling of the turret that enable it to be so accurate and a much more powerful feature. Think about that when you're playing. The right stick is used to get in the ballpark or close to the opponent, but it does not do 100% of the work. The left stick is used to bring it home. So the right stick again is used to do a lot of the work, but your left stick, your strafe, the way you move can really help keep that crosshair on an opponent a little bit longer or just cinch in that accuracy. It's a synthesis of the two and it's a very hard concept to picture, but you just have to learn how to use it that way. I see a lot of new players who rely heavily on that right stick more than they should, and it impacts their gameplay because on console, you have to use the two in unison. You have to use your strafe to bring things closer together. Now, if you wanna see if you're over aiming or under aiming, it's rather simple. Just record a few of your games and watch them back. Look at when you're snapping on target. Is your crosshair going past the enemy? If you're swinging to the right, yeah, then you might be over aiming. If you don't reach the opponent, if you stop a little bit short, you might be under aiming. You'll have to watch a handful of replays to see a consistent trend here, but it happens with a lot of players before they found that sweet spot sensitivity. A lot of times, if you look at players who play on eight or nine sensitivity, Watch how often they over aim. They go past the opponent rather than sticking the crosshair on them the first time. Vice versa, somebody who plays on a slow sensitivity might be under aiming. As we wrap up here, the important thing is that you have a solid foundation and setup and you find the right sensitivity. From there, it is practice. This is a mechanic, this is instinctive, this is something you don't think about, it just happens while you play. And obviously the more you play, the more your accuracy will improve. But spend the time to find the right sensitivity that you're comfortable with. This comes off of your play style. If you're an aggressive player, if you're a passive player, and just sticking with that sensitivity and practicing it. You have to make it muscle memory, so don't make the mistake a lot of players do of swapping every two or three games. Remember, it is not 100% of the right stick's job. You need to be using the right and left stick in unison with one another to get the optimal accuracy. Don't take it to the extreme of, I ran six feet out of cover just to get my crosshair on him, Dragoon. That was a dumb idea. No, it's minute and small adjustments that the left stick is making, and it's really helping you out in a shot string when you're in a gunfight with somebody else. This is something that will develop naturally with people who play consistently. You know, experienced players, it's a natural progression. So it's not something that you're probably going to acquire overnight. It's just important to think about the tank versus the static turret metaphor. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. If you have tips that I missed, let me know down below. If you enjoyed, please like the video. And let me know if you maybe would want to see more gameplays with the controller cam in there. I can definitely do that, and I think it's pretty fun to see what it looks like when you're playing. And just, you know, sometimes, oh, that guy claws, or that guy uses the weird southpaw variation, which I don't. I don't southpaw. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I look forward to seeing you this week.